Today I'm going to give you my four reasons why I am a believer, why I am a Christian, why I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, these first two are actually personal to me, and it might not affect you at all. But number one for me is I was born and raised in a Christian home. So it was pretty easy for me. I was around that all the time. My mom, strong believer. My granddad was a Baptist preacher. He's a strong believer. We saw so many things in our lives uh, as I was raised up that I was going to church. I was singing the hymns, hearing the pastors, being in youth groups, just being around it all the time. So number one for me was my personal experience being raised in a Christian home, praying all the time, having faith in situations where we were ever down or poor or just a rough spot or sick. Prayer and hope was always the answer. Anytime somebody passed away in our family, it was always uh, a peaceful blanket of God's Holy Spirit, knowing that we're going to see them again one day because of the promises that he gave us. So number one for me in my personal walk is I was raised in a Christian family, so I was always exposed to that. Number two was the miracles that I saw through being raised into that. My granddad had so many stories and I saw the miracles, not just hearing them from times past and you think, oh, okay, well, maybe that's embellished a little bit. I mean, seeing miracles, the problem that arose, then the prayer that ensued, and then the miracle that followed and you see God's hand working. I saw many things through my granddad, many things through my mom, especially my mom because I was closer to her, but so many miracles. Just one little one that I didn't get to see, but she told many times is when she was a little girl, she wanted to play camp. She wanted to have a campfire. So she went into their camper in the backyard, a little camper that they had, a little pop-up camper. She got a can of kerosene thinking that that was the way to do it, that you just light that and you, you know, you have a fire. Well, she had a literal, literally a coffee can of kerosene liquid just filled to the top and a box of matches. And she was striking those matches, dropping it into the can, and it would just be put out just as if it was water. And she knew that it was supposed to start, that she saw her father light many fires, not really fires, but candles and, you know, the wicks, because kerosene can go up the wick and you light the wick with a controlled amount of kerosene, but not just an open can of that. But each match would just be put out. And then her father, my granddad, came out there looking for her, found her, saw the kerosene, grabbed her up, praised God so many times. They have no idea how that miracle happened. But yes, the, the matches as it would go into the can would just absolutely go out as if it was a can of water. So that was one that I've been told throughout. But so many, I could just go on and on. I could do a video of just the miracles that I've seen. So me personally, and that might not be for you, but if you get into the Christian walk and you're around Christian people, you will start seeing God's hand move and you will see the unexplainable things happen more frequently. So my number two was the miracles that I witnessed growing up. The third one, okay, now this is going to start being applicable to you and what you see around us. Number three is creation itself. God's word says that he left his fingerprints in creation. The creation is so vast and so diverse and so creative that man is without excuse looking for God. So if you're out there and you think, oh, what if you're on a deserted island and you don't know, you never hear about Jesus Christ? Well, God says, that's fine. If you don't know about Jesus Christ, that's not your fault. If you didn't hear that message and choose to accept it or reject it, you can look for God himself. Knock and the door will be open. So just looking around, even on a desert island, seeing trees, coconuts, the sand, the seashells, the water, the sea life, and asking of the sky, the sun, the sunrise, the moon, the stars, looking at creation and saying, you know what, somebody has to be behind this. My common sense tells me that this didn't just happen. Life is too complex 
the human life, the plant life, there's too many details in that. Our sight, how does sight work, right? All of our senses, smell, taste, digestion, hearing, touch, all of that procreation, that didn't just happen. You look at all of creation, you look at a butterfly, just from a caterpillar turning into a butterfly, you look at the distinct pattern on the butterfly's wings. Look at a tiger, a tiger's face. Just look at the details of the stripes, the whiskers, the nose, the eyes, the iris in his eyes. So many crazy things that I could go on and on. Let's put it this way. If you were walking down the beach, you didn't know anything about God, right? You're just walking down the beach and you see a sandcastle. One of the first things that happens in your brain is, I wonder who made this. Because you see the detail in the sandcastle. You see the drawbridge, the windows, the little columns on top. You see that, and one of the first things, because common sense says that didn't just happen. Well, infinitely more complex than that is human life and animal life and plant life and our solar system. Infinitely more complex and how it all works so well together. So my number three for being a believer is creation itself. There's no way possible that it just happened out of slime and that we all came from that. Now, do I believe in a certain degree of evolution? Absolutely, because God created it that way. He didn't create all of these breeds of dogs. He created two dogs. But he put in their DNA enough complexity to have the breeds over years and hundreds and thousands of years to be able to diversify. Same thing with people. He didn't make yellow people, red people, black people, white people, brown people. He made a couple, Adam and Eve. We don't know what color they were. Adam and Eve, and from them, their, their DNA was so complex and so diverse that all of the nations came about, all of the nationalities, all of the races came from that. Same thing with cats and monkeys and tigers, all of this stuff. You look at the different breeds within that, fish, birds, you look at the different breeds within it and know that, yeah, there is a certain degree of evolution, but within it. You also look at the complexities of how do these animals know? Look at insects. How does a spider know how to build a web? How do they know even why to build a web? And they don't teach their young how to build a web. It's just ingrained in them that they know to spiral around, have the ability to spin that web to catch food so that they can survive. A bird making a nest, a bird flying south for the, for the winter. Look at creation, number three. That is huge. There's no way man is without excuse. If you look at the complexities in creation and say that there is no God, I think you're personally nuts. It takes more faith to believe there's not a God than to believe that there is a God. Same thing with that sandcastle on the beach. It would take more faith to believe that nobody made that, that just the wind, the tide, the water coming up and splashing around made that sandcastle. It would take more faith to believe that that happened rather than somebody making that sandcastle infinitely complex is creation itself. Number four, you think, okay, why would a loving God make a place like this and then just disappear and not be known, not be seen? Well, guess what? He left us his word. The Bible is God's word. It's living and breathing. I'm going to do another video just talking about the Bible and what that means in people's lives and how important it is to the Christian faith. So God's Word is there. That's why I believe. I've read the Bible. I've read parts of the Bible. I've read all the Bible. I've read chapters. I've read verses. I've read books of the Bible. I've read spin-off books. I've heard sermons. And I know that I've done my research. I've done my study. And I can't find any reason not to believe that that is true. The whole story of the Bible is one story. And I'll explain that in another video about how the Bible works. That it's not some scary, crazy old book. 
It is the best seller of all times because it's God's word. And there's so many things around that and within that that I am going to do a separate video for it. But number four for me is God's spoken word. He's got it right there. He's got an owner's manual. So why would he give us this big, complex, diverse planet and not just show up, not be there for us? Well, he is through his word. And we've got access to him. We learn what to do. We learn how to access him and how to seek him through that word so that we can have a walk with God, so that we can communicate with God. We know how to pray. We know what the Holy Spirit, the Son of God, and God himself, that Trinity, what meaning that has in our lives. So number four, God's word. And number five, the reason I believe is Christianity is the only religion that I know of where the Son of God, God Himself, showed up, showed us how to live, died for our sins, bought us back from the sin, the fallen world that we're in, and resurrected, that died, that paid the penalty for our sin, and rose again. Any other prophet or so-called messiahs from other religions, they're still in the grave. Their bones are just dust right now because they're still there. They don't even claim that they resurrected. There's none of the other religions claim of the resurrection. And I believe that because Jesus did resurrect. How do I know that? You can do studies on how, how to know that. But for me, knowing that 12 disciples who followed him so closely, they knew him the most. They were so depressed in those three days when he was actually buried. He died on the cross and was buried for three days before he rose again. Those 12 disciples were totally devastated because the faith that they had put into Jesus as the Messiah was crushed until he rose again. And then each of them died a martyr's death. I think only a couple, maybe John was uh, excommunicated to an island, but the rest of them died a martyr's death, getting killed, stoned, hung, hung, up, hung upside down on a cross even. Why would they do that? You would think one would default and say, no, we're just kidding. He really, didn't, he really didn't ascend. He didn't resurrect. But hundreds of people saw Jesus. They were eyewitness. And that's how the movement started because of that belief, that conviction that they saw that, even to the point where they're willing to die themselves for sharing that truth. That's crazy to me. I can't imagine anybody being so convicted like that by a lie that they would be hung upside down on a cross to prove the point, to prove that it was real. So, so many things that you can go into study to believe that, but my number five is Jesus himself, the Messiah, the promised Messiah, the Old Testament prophecies. There's so many of them that prophesied exactly when he was coming, who he would be, how he would live, what city he would be born in, how he would die, what he would do during his life. All those prophecies from the Old Testament point directly to Jesus Christ, and he is the only one that could have and did fulfill all of those prophecies. That's why I believe. So those are my big five of why I'm a Christian and why I believe what I believe. I hope some of those made sense to you. I hope you start doing your own study, your own research. Look for valid resources. There's a lot of crap out there. There's a lot of false teachers that are out there that will mess with your head. There's a lot of bad things going on in the Christian community, just sift through and find what's good for you. Find what's right so you can do your own study to prove it to yourself that God is for real and He has a plan for you.